Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Teen Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, Rhonda, and <laughs> welcome home. Thank from your you. Fantastic overseas adventure. Thank you. Thank you so much for letting me come back <laughs> and not finding a replacement while I was gone. We have missed you, and it's so exciting to see you. Yeah, it's really great to be back. And it is great that today we have two incredible guests. Kyle Jones, who is, are you finished with your PhD, Kyle? Not yet. I'm all, all but dissertation. I'll ABD. Be done, I'll be done before Thanksgiving. Yay. That's when, that's when I defend. Okay, yeah. cool. And Kyle, this um, podcast is going to be published on November 8th, and I understand that November 7th is your birthday, so let's wish you a podcast happy birthday. It's November 9th, but thank you. <laughs> oh, your, your birthday's November 9th. Okay, got it wrong. Nice anyway, birthday. thank you anyway. I mean, happy happy birthday, anyway. birthday to you. Now speed it really, up. Speed now it up. really turn happy people. Happy birthday to you. Heather, you joined happy too. Happy birthday, birthday dear, dear Kyle. Kyle. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. To you. <laughs> no, Thank really. you. Gosh, I feel so special. You can leave my address in the show notes and folks can send me gifts. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> fantastic. Well, we also have Heather Donenworth. Heather, did I say your name correctly? Yes. That's right. And Heather is a great member of the Wednesday training group. And she's a great team therapist. And um, Heather sent David a really cool email about a question that she had regarding one of a client, some clients, she, um, her client is struggling with some issues and we decided to turn her cool question into a podcast. I'm going to just leave you with that kind of interesting, um, you know, tidbit. And then and I'm going to read three really quick pod, uh, podcast endorsements. Um, two were on uh, episode 262, which we published on October 4th. And that was on a country doctor. That was part two of two. And she was, thought nothing I do makes a difference. And we got one endorsement from somebody all the way from Singapore and she, Bridget. And she wrote, thank you so much for your wonderful podcast that has enriched my life, especially during lockdowns due to COVID. After listening to all the podcasts from first to last, I have concluded that Team CBT is the very best. I've also been blessed by your Feeling Great book club run by Brandon, which is so fantastic. I own all of your books. I haven't all read them yet, but I am your number one fan, and I loved this podcast. Nothing I do makes a difference. Lots of gratitude from Singapore. Well, thank and you for thank you for that, and uh, I. I I'm sure Jillian too will be thrilled by by your comments. I think that the live work that we do these are probably our most impactful podcasts of all, and it's my hope that uh, one day I, I could compile a list of all the live podcasts um, mm. in, in one location, and I, I would love to see a graduate school for psychology or something like that use those as a course for a semester or a year course, listening to them and studying them. Uh, that's one reason I've been wanting to create the, the live broadcasts to prove, first of all, that uh, rapid and lasting recovery is possible. And secondly, to show exactly how to achieve this, th this goal, because it's not magic. It's, it's a step-by-step -step techniques that hopefully other therapists can learn and apply and, and also get these uh, tremendously rapid recoveries from depression and all of the anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. And as I'm very thankful for Jillian, too, for making the magic come alive. Every time we do live work, it's magic happening. And it just... Uh, 
it just to me they're they're mind blowing and it takes courage to be the patient but boy what a gift Jillian gave us and Michelle and 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 you uh, too uh, Rhonda have mm-hmm. done live work on on the podcasts and just fantastic Pod, daily yeah we've had a lot of great podcasts yes yeah, on HOI and mm-hmm. and, and uh, Maryland Coffee right um, yeah well somebody else wrote up wrote us about that podcast and he named Brian and he said um I've just finished this podcast thank you so much such an amazing session really whetted my appetite for team therapy again but I also wanted to send an email read an email about episode 264 which we published on October 18th called how to get laid with a little help from the five secrets and Jana from Lincoln Nebraska wrote Okay, the title of this podcast made me laugh out loud, but listening to it, it's really good stuff, and I can relate to it. Thanks for the Monday chuckle. Thank you for those kind comments. By the way, a um, a very conservative uh, Christian man who works with 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 youth uh, wrote that he was uh, profoundly offended by that title. Oh, and um, it it kind of bothered me because my father was a little bit like that, so uh, uptight and so judgmental. Uh, so sadly, I mean, he he was a great minister and did a lot of good, but he he was just so filled with 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 judgments and uh, everything has to be so buttoned up and tight and 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 rigid. So uh, I've I've also been hit by uh, a, a Muslim. Uh, conservative who was offended by the show where we talked about the fellow with OCD who had these pornographic images in his mind. And and this fellow was very offended and said, you're forcing uh, Muslims to put these pictures of prophets having sex in in, in their minds. And uh, your book, Feeling Great, should be R-rated. But he was very polite and admiring. He said he loved the podcast, but he found you know this, this this story, which was I thought a very heartwarming story about moral religious rigidity and how it can lead to severe pathology for for people and how how, those, how that can be overcome. But it's it's interested interesting to me that people have all kinds of sensitivities, and sometimes what's humorous or even inspiring to one person can be offensive to to another person and that's that's a little bit what our broadcast today is going to be all about Mm -hmm. well heather do you want to get us started and and kind of summarize the email that you sent to david and and talk about the client that you were struggling with and and tell us what you know your your background a little bit and where where you live and you know just kind of who, who you are sure Um, And I just want to thank you all for having me on the podcast. I am excited to be here, and I think this is an important topic, so I'm thankful that it's um, going to be talked about. I am, my name is Heather Donenworth, and I live in um, Ashland, Ohio, and I have my own private practice. Um, I've had it for about a year now, and I mostly see adult clients, but I see some adult and older children too. And um, I don't know if I said this already, but I'm a licensed independent social worker. And many of my clients are within the LGBTQ plus community. And something that comes up regularly is um, that they're struggling to communicate with um, loved ones, that they're getting Um, hurtful comments, rejecting comments, and they have some differing religious religious views. Fantastic, and thank you so much for bringing us this this topic of really how to communicate with uh, loved ones who are making arguably judgmental, blaming, hypercritical, rejecting comments to people to children uh, and other loved ones based on se- sexual orientation. And, uh, you know, as, as, as I've mentioned to, to a couple of you, my dad was a Lutheran minister and toward the end of his, his and he, he was a very successful minister and he, he built wonderful Lutheran congr- congregation in, in Phoenix and built a beautiful 
church and and did a lot of good for a lot of people. But toward the end of his life, he he, he uh, after he retired from his congregation, he went to Arizona State University and began working there uh, with trying to convert gay people, uh, you know, and to save them through Jesus Christ and you know this idea that that you know this is some some sin and and it it really outraged me and i never i never forgave him for, for that I, I i we've heard of children being ostracized i ostracized my father really uh, i didn't want to have anything to do with him if, uh, after that and you know probably i shouldn't have reacted like that but i i still feel that profound rage particularly because i think it's 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 corruption in the extreme to represent religion as something that's judging people i don't think jesus was judging anyone he had some prostitute he liked who washed his feet with her hair and stuff and people criticize him oh you shouldn't let that prostitute wash your feet with her hair and and you know i, I won't say what he said because it you know it was it would be a uh, 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 we'd be banned from from the air but he he did not uh, take kindly to, to, to that and it seems to me that uh, the core of most religions is about love and acceptance rather than the judgmentalism and and yet when i look around the world it's just painful to me to see so much uh hostility and hatred in the name of this or that that religion and so i think that's a great topic you brought us and one that will be uh, intense interest. And if David would shut up, we could get into the topic. <laughs> well, one of the things you said, Heather, was that your client said to you um, that, when, um, that he was having problems with his father and his father told him that being gay is wrong. And I disagree with your lifestyle. And there was a bit of struggle with how would you respond to those kinds of statements with the five secrets? And, and, and I'll read the ones that you sent us. Being gay is wrong. It's a sin. That's something that that you, you might hear from a parent. Or if someone doesn't know if they're a man or a woman, then something is messed up in their head. And we're worried that you're going to go to hell for your lifestyle. We don't want your partner at our house, and we don't want to see any affection either and, and more. And I think I'm sure people have heard hor- horrible, horrible stuff like that. And yeah. so since no one else is talking, I'll say there's two issues. <laughs> and Kyle brought us the idea of outcome and process resistance. And outcome resistance is the issue. Do I want to get closer to this person? And, you know, so, so before you'd use the five secrets to develop a more loving relationship with a parent who's being hostile toward you or rejecting toward you or critical toward you, you have to decide, is this something that I wish to do. And there's no rule that says you you have to do that, but only after making that decision would you then go ahead to use the five secrets to try to develop a more loving relationship. So why don't you tell us a little about your thinking on that, Kyle? Because you you brought this point up early on, and I thought it was a brilliant point. Well, yeah, I think in my just sort of personal reaction to the um, to some of the statements that Heather provided and you know, I've heard this myself and in the past, you know, I just sort of have this kind of gut reaction, of like a cringe, like, oh, when I really want to get close to the to a person, even a parent, you know, who's kind of saying homophobic or transphobic things, you know, who's kind of being mean and, and nasty would like, would my agenda really to be to get closer to improve my relationship with this person. And it just made me think, you know, well, for my answer, maybe it would be no, depending on the circumstance, you know, and I think that's an option that everybody has if they're coming to therapy to get some help in a, you know, interpersonal relationship problem, you know, they get to decide, do they want to improve their relationship? Do they kind of want to just maintain the status quo? Or maybe they actually want to want help kind of, you know, ending the relationship, exiting it. Yeah, that was a choice I made. Maybe I didn't make the right choice, but uh but you, you get to yeah. choose, right? I don't. We're, yeah. not here, we're not here to say like, oh, you've got to use the five secrets to get close to your, you know, hateful religious father. You know, it, it wouldn't work in the first place if it wasn't your agenda, and we were forcing you to. But um, you know, I think that that's what needs to be kind of decided uh, before any work on the five secrets would get done. And I think as a therapist, I'd have to be really convinced that that was what you wanted. 
cool. I love that. Heather will now say some really awesome things. Yeah, I think that is um, really important, Kyle. And for this specific client, he does really have a desire to get closer to his father. But at the same time, he he doesn't want his father to continue to preach at him or to change his, try to ch ch expect that he's going to change um, who he is. Um, and he doesn't want to hide parts of himself from his father. Yeah, I think, you know, I think kind of using the five secrets to um, improve the relationship with dad, you know, is, is totally possible. You know, I think like David's taught me and has said many times in the past, you know, that there's time for problem solving later, you, you know, and I don't think we could guarantee that, you know, dad would stop making comments. You know, I don't even, I don't know if that's kind of on the table as an agenda, right? We couldn't control dad's behavior with our magic communication, right? But we could, you know, uh, help your client get closer to, to, to dad. And maybe that's something that the client would even want to consider like, well, Hey, I actually can't, um, you know, use the five secrets to get closer and change his behavior. I could just try and have a, you know, like David says, tap into that river of emotion and improve our relationship. Maybe he would stop doing that, but we couldn't guarantee that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It seems, you know, it seems like it would be so sad to, um, give up the relationship before giving it a try. Yeah. And maybe that's where this client's coming from, right? Like, you know, it's, and it sounds like it, that he's kind of weighed all the, all the things that are going on, you know, um, all the, all the good reasons not to improve the relationship. And he's still saying, well, gosh, you know, this is my, this is my father. This is my parent. This is my aunt. This is my loved one. You know, they don't accept me for who I am, you know, and we've been butting heads and clashing and arguing about it, you know, but, but they're still important to me. I love them. I, I, I want to maintain that relationship. So um, there's one dimension in this we probably won't, won't go into in today's podcast. We're going to focus on the five secrets and how, how to communicate with hypercritical, judgmental individuals, uh, loved ones or hated ones for that matter, uh, who, who are spouting out things that, that, that you might find incredibly offensive and uh and, and mean uh and and on and on loving the thoughts in the mind of the person who's being criticized is also incredibly important because only your thoughts can upset you so if you're getting extremely angry or extremely uh feeling judged or worthless or inadequate that that would involve working with a team therapist or, or your own self-help on writing down your negative thoughts, identifying the distortions in them, talk, talking back to them and changing the way you think. And that will also make it easier to work with the five secrets, because if you're feeling peaceful, like yourself isn't under any kind of threat, you'll be much more effective with the five secrets than if you're feeling incredibly anxious or guilty or ashamed or inadequate or pissed off or or whatever. But let, let's give it a try. Let's quickly uh, summarize what the five secrets are, and then we can practice with the, uh, the intimacy drill and keep the idea of joyous failure in mind, because even <laughs> us who are presumably experts will goof up and get a C or a B instead of an A and then have to change an approach and do role reversals in order to develop these skills, which are very powerful but not easy to learn. And there's three listening skills, the disarming technique, thought and feeling, empathy, and inquiry. The disarming techniques means finding truth in what the other person is saying, even if it seems outrageous or unfair or illogical or screwed up. Um, and the thought empathy is paraphrasing the other person's words, repeating what the person said. Uh, feeling empathy is acknowledging how the other person feelings based on what they said. Like if they say, oh, you're, you're a sinner or something, then the, the, the feeling empathy might, might be, wow, your dad or whoever it is, you're, you're saying that I'm, I'm a sinner. And, and I, I can imagine that you're, you're feeling uh, disgusted and angry and judgmental toward me and frustrated and exasperated and, and profoundly d disappointed, 
Um, and then inquiry would be to ask questions. Is that true? Am I reading you right? Can you tell me, tell me more, more about that? And of those three techniques, the thought and feeling empathy, the inquiry, or the disarming, they're all difficult, and they're all things that most people don't do, and a lot of people won't do. They just re- insist on arguing. <laughs> but if you want to do them, uh, they, they will require a lot of retraining of your natural inclinations, which for most people are to get defensive or adversarial or, or whatever. And then the I feel statements is instead of you know arguing or attacking the other person, you share your, your feelings in a vulnerable way using an I feel statement, like I'm feeling X, Y, and Z. I'm feeling really hurt now, uh, and, and I'm, I'm feeling kind of put down or judged and, uh, you know, whatever feelings that that you happen to be having. And then stroking means expressing love or respect, even in the heat of battle. And it would be something like, I'm I'm feeling so hurt and angry now and, 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 and kind of I'm in a state of, I'm stunned in a state of shock and disbelief. And at the same time, and it's so painful to to hear that from my father, who I love so much, uh, and and yet uh, at, at at the same time I'm, I'm I'm feeling, you know, hurt and angry, and uh, and, and that and the fact that I love you so much makes it even more painful for me, or, or whatever, whatever. But though, but though, those are the are the techniques. And then the way you you learn it, uh, you can do it on paper. You can read my book, Feeling Good Together. There's a lot of uh, exercises in there that you can do to learn how to to use these tools if you wish wish to to use them. But uh, we'll show you the intimacy drill or the intimacy exercise. And one of us will play the role of the, the, the gay person and the other can play the role of the, the, the parent and the parent will attack and then the, the, the LGBTQ uh, uh, will respond using the five secrets, and then we'll give a grade. Was that an A, a B, a C, a D? Uh, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? How could it be improved? And then maybe a, a repeat role play. And you have to stumble your way through through the dark when you do this, and you have to ch- check your ego at the door and be willing to fail because there's so much room for improvement in and virtually all, all of us occasionally will see someone in our Tuesday group who's like a, a giant, a, a, a super expert like J- Jill Levitt. But even on rare occasions, Jill will, will struggle. And, uh, and for the most of the rest of us, we, we, we make frequent errors. So you should expect to make errors and have those errors, uh, you know, have someone point you in, in a direction of improvement. So who who would like to start out? I, I have a lot of these statements here that you sent us, Heather. And I mean, I could start out as the critical parent. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm happy to try to try being the uh, the, uh, uh, the the attackee. Okay, all right. Our, <laughs> the our, queer person who's being attacked by their okay. me too. parent. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let let's let's go for it. Um, the uh, Kyle, you you know that that being gay is is wrong. It's it, it's a sin, and Jesus, you know, explicitly taught that in his Sermon on the Mount, and you can find that throughout the New Testament, which is the word of of God, as well as Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Yeah. How was that? That that was pretty good. I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling uh, nervous even now to respond. You know, maybe that's what I start with. Gosh, you know, you're you're yeah. saying that being gay is a sin and it goes against God and 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 Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And you know, I'm feeling really a- anxious to respond to you. And you know, I'm also just gosh, feeling kind of hurt and and sad and and even kind of guilty for so long. I really wanted to you know, deny my sexuality so I could stay in line with you and the family values and the church, you know, I've been really frustrated and angry and ashamed of who I am, you know, but, but this is me and my sexual orientation isn't something I can, you know, just, just change. I realize that this may profoundly disappoints you. You're maybe you're feeling let down. Um, and that's, that's painful for me to acknowledge, but, um, you know, I, I I don't want to lose you. 
you know, I, I still love you. You know, you're my, you're my parents. And, um, you know, I think that as we've, as I've come out and we've been talking about this, I've just kind of been arguing with you and, and pushing you away and trying to get you to accept me. And I haven't really been doing a good job of trying to understand your feelings, you know, like maybe you're feeling angry and uh, ashamed of me. And, you know, maybe you're feeling a, a sense of loss, you know, for, for the future you thought you'd have with me and, and the life that I'd have, and you'd be a part of it. Maybe you're anxious or nervous, uh, about how to talk to other members of the church who ask about me, you know, uh, I'm just trying to get a sense of what you might be going through. And I haven't been doing that. Am, am I getting that right? Just tell me what, what you've been feeling. Great. Now, um, what grade would you g- 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 give yourself? I I feel like I, that was hard. I, but I feel like I kind of did. Okay. Maybe B plus a minus. Okay. What, what grade did you give it Heather? I would say A minus. I thought it was really good. What grade did you give it, Rhonda? I would also say an A minus. Um, I loved your I feels. I loved your feeling empathy. While your under your level of understanding, maybe you're feeling a sense of loss. Maybe you're nervous about talking to the members of the church. I love how you connected with, you know, what the possibility of, you know, the other person's feelings were. I love how you admitted that you had been arguing before and instead of trying to connect, I thought that was really heartwarming. I loved the stroking. I don't want to lose you. I really love you. Um, I I could be wrong, but I'm not sure if I heard a disarm in there. And that's why I'd give it an A minus, but I could be wrong. Yeah, that That's great feedback. I was about to give it an A or an A plus because I just thought it was a jaw droppingly beautiful. And you mentioned anger even. Uh, and you're feeling it. Somebody was, told me to do that. I don't know. Yeah, don't that's know. right. That's, that, that's <laughs> right. You remembered. That, that's cool. And I thought your I feel statements were just left nothing to be desired. Your your stroking was just beautiful. Your inquiry was, was an A+. Plus. Mm-hmm. But as uh, Rhonda has pointed out, there there was no no disarming uh well, and, let me let me let maybe ask you a question here or share my thoughts around around the disarm like um and I think this is something that I've that I've struggled with you know like when somebody's saying you know like you're a you're you're a sinner you know being gay is a sin you know I I, I find it personally very hard to just say yeah you're right being gay is a sin <laughs> you know well we've always we've always taught you should never do literal disarming right yeah, yeah you, exactly you hear exactly. the music behind the words so what's the music behind the words yeah and i think my my approach was maybe trying to extrapolate a little bit that like i haven't been trying to understand where you're coming from was my attempt and mm-hmm. it sounds like that sort of sh- fell fell short a little bit well, I thought it was great what yeah, you that said. Was great. Oh, okay. it, it, that was, it was really A plus stuff. Yeah, but how, how will how do you agree with something profoundly, uh, you know, a, a offensive? And by the way, there's there's exceptions to every rule. There, there's no rule that says you have to use all of the five secrets every time, or you have to disarm every time. But there is a great way to disarm that statement that that you're you're a you're a sinner, and 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 what what else? What what else was did I say to Kyle? Being gay is wrong. It's a sin. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that. It, it, it's wrong. It, it it's a it, it's a sin, and uh, th- there's a, just a beautiful way to disarm that. Uh, well, it's a, it's Ron- a blind spot for me. You tell me. Yeah, yeah Rhonda. Rhonda's going to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think <laughs> I was trying to figure this out myself, Kyle, because you're right. You can't really say, "Oh, yeah, you're right." Jesus taught that because you could find you know liturgy that supports any kind of statement you can how can you um disarm something when someone says that's a sin oh yeah you're right there so the only thing i could think of is saying well you know you're right you and i are one of the things that's happening is that you and i aren't on the same page about what this is like you're you know you're thinking it's Hmm. a sin and i can really see how important that is to you your belief system and and yeah, yeah, that's no, it. I like that. Or maybe something like, um, you know, I'm going against your values and your faith, you know, mm-hmm. and your beliefs. 
That's great. Heather, how are you going to disarm it? Yeah, so this is where I've really been stuck too for the same reasons that Kyle mentioned. But I'm wondering um, if a disarm would be to say um, you're right, I am gay, and that is against your beliefs. That's heading in the right direction. Then I would add to it, and 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 so as the son, I, I really have failed you tremendously. And uh, you say I'm a sinner. I I probably have a lot more sins than you're even aware of. And uh, but to me, the greatest sin is is to uh, hurt a loved one. And uh, and I feel horrible about the, the fact that that I'm hurting you, Dad and uh, causing you so much shock and shame and uh, anger. And uh, uh, to, to tell me more what that's been like for you. I know it's heartbreaking for me because, you know, I just love you so much. And I, I'm hoping that I won't lose you. But at the same time, I, I could understand your, your anger, your, your rage, your shock, your profound disappointment, some, something like, like, like that. Yeah. I mean, that's almost identical to what you did. <laughs> I know. Let the record show. David already gave me an A. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't give you an A. I gave you an A plus because I thought it was so blow away. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, you know, mm. yeah, the disarming technique is hard in this one. And I, something that I thought about as we've been doing this is like, you know, it's easy for us to kind of sit here and extrapolate about it, but I really appreciate what David said before we even got started, right? Like to be in that place of being so vulnerable and, and so honest and so genuine, yeah. you know, you, you might have to spend a lot of time doing some personal work around your, your feelings before you can kind of get to this place yeah. because it's so challenging. It's so hard, you know, especially if you're yeah. struggling already having just come out and, you know, feeling lots of different things about who you are, you know, I just want to acknowledge that again. Yeah, great. Let's try again. And um, you want to take a, a stab at it, Heather? I can give it a try. And you can be the, the uh, accuser, uh, Rhonda. Okay. And uh, how about trying number two? If someone doesn't know if they're a man or a woman, then something is messed up in their head. That, that, that's a pretty good one. Okay. Oh, Heather, you know, wow. If, if, you know, if you don't know, if someone like you doesn't know if you're a man or a woman, there must be something really messed up in your head. Yeah. I know that your beliefs are really important to you. And you've told me that you believe that God created a man and a woman. And um, it must be so confusing and upsetting to you to hear me say that I don't know how I identify as rather if I identify as a man or a woman. And I really love you and I appreciate everything that you've done for me. You've, you've been there for me through a lot, but I have to be honest that I'm hurting right now, that I'm feeling disconnected from you. And I'm wanting acceptance from you. And I don't feel like I've done a good enough job of trying to see where you're coming from. And I'm wondering if you would be willing to talk to me more about that. Great. Now, what, what grade did you give yourself? Oh, I would say like a C. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. And uh, what grade did you give it, Kyle? I thought it was really good. I, I would have given it an A. How about you, Rhonda? Oh, my God. It brought tears to my eyes. Both you and Kyle brought tears to my eyes. And that's definitely an A. Heather, you're being really hard on yourself. Um, well, I, 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 I want to support you, Heather, so I have to agree with you. Okay. Uh, I, I thought that uh, it was beautiful and certainly uh, to have two 
potentially critical people give you an A and one bring tears to the eyes, that, that's, that's pretty high praise. But I thought it could have easily been improved quite a lot. When people say, I, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to talk to me, I thought we were already talking. So it, it sounds like maybe we could talk some other time, like I, maybe sometime after the first of the year. Yeah, like intellectual hogwash. It's to me a kind of a, a foolish question. Uh, and uh, the uh, I, I thought your "I feel" statement was 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 really great. Yeah, I'm hurting and I'm feeling disconnected. Mm. And I wouldn't be surprised, Mom, if you're hurting and feeling disconnected as well. And and I wouldn't be surprised if you're feeling, uh, you know, stunned and anxious and confused and maybe even a bit p- pissed off at me and angry, and and hurting inside, and 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 I'm and and I'm I'm, I'm just so yearning to talk to you and you know how much I love you and maybe this this horrible pain that's splitting us apart could actually be the thing that helps us develop a, a deeper and more beautiful relationship. But can you tell me, Mom, what, what it's like f- f- for you? I, I, I really want to hear. Uh, if I, I want to hear all the, the negative stuff and all the, all the pain that, that I've been, that been, cause, been causing you. Uh, how, how's that? That was perfect. That was great. Okay, f- f- why? Well, you acknowledged some anger, too, which yeah. is good. Yeah, it just becomes a bit more other-centered. And, and in a way, uh, once you get into the five secrets, it's really a salvation because you don't have to prove anything or win any arguments. All you have to do is let the other person know that you care about them and, and then verbalize the feelings you think they're probably having, which gives them permission to talk about it and show yourself to be curious and open and and and, and receptive and and. We make these things look easy, but but they're not. And you know, the like like uh, when I'm training people, even to respond to criticism in a non-defensive way, often we'll have to do 10, 15 role plays in a row where they they're getting an F every time until they, they suddenly get it. And and so uh, the well, I don't want to give the impression on this show that this is going to be easy for for anyone. If we have some listeners who are struggling with sexual identity issues that then you're getting a lot of painful stuff from loved ones my, my my heart goes out to you i mean it was even painful for me as a son i i'm not gay and hetero and whatever but when i found out that my father what he was doing i mean it it just caused so much so much rage in, in me it was it was just so painful and he, he wasn't criticizing me but then i said okay well then i'm gonna i'll try to live kind of life that you can criticize dad you know i'll be kind of a hippie and i'll, and I'll be wild and 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 that that type of thing and I, I kind of took pleasure in leading a lifestyle that i knew he would he, he would he, he would find shocking or he that he would be be judging i that that is so mean spirited kyle i think you you were you've been lucky that uh you haven't had maybe as much as some other people because you're tall you're powerful you're strong <laughs> you're charming you're handsome you're you're I really think, really think, awesome yeah. well, but you must have had some of this yeah no i think and, and thank you for your compliments and pointing out that yeah i have had a lot of a lot of privileges you know and that sort of is a buffer to a lot of um some society's stigma that I could perceive, you know, um, and I did get, did get lucky, you know, with my parents, you know, that, that sort of phone call ended with me coming out and, and my mom saying, okay, I, you know, we love you. Do you want me to tell your father, you know, oh, <laughs> oh, neat. Yeah, mothers can be so fantastic. <laughs> and, you know, and there was, some, there was a period of sort of some angst, you know, and I think this is something too, right? Like we were kind of disconnected for, you know, months, maybe a year, you know, mm-hmm. where we kind of, we didn't have that good kind of deep connected relationship. It was sort of like a don't ask, don't tell situation, you know, and yeah. maybe, maybe that's where, you know, an LGBTQ listener will find themselves right in sort of the status quo limbo, you know, but then eventually we did have, uh, you know, some moments of 
kind of more genuine sharing of feelings and connection. And my dad kind of kind of revealed that he he was kind of grieving the loss of this idea that he had for me as a son, you know, that he kind of imagined me kind of like getting married to a woman and like having these little blonde children running around that he could get to be a grandparent for, you know, and yeah, he, sure. he, his, his ideal was sort of just shattered by that. And then kind of yeah. me acknowledging that and, and um, kind of just, you know, empathizing with him about that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, it was yeah. like he, he stopped sort of, struggling with it afterwards it's yeah. kind of magical the the big barrier when you're feeling hurt by someone and i guess i that's what i did to my dad is to judge them in return and say they shouldn't feel like this and i'm okay. right and they're wrong and, and and that type of thing and so we're just judging them back and i think probably what happened with you kyle because you are so loving and gifted and so so warm and other centered in, in your way of relating to people that that you, you were probably soothing to your father and that made it easier for him to warm up and, and, and give you love in return. Yeah, I well, thank you. And I think that that kind of is what happened, you know, but that let me be honest, like there were lots of times where doing that judgment in return actually felt kind of good. I felt, oh, yeah. I felt justified. I felt like oh, yeah. doing the right thing. Like I was standing up for my morals and values and yeah, right. like how, how dare he sort of just not totally accept me right away. hundred yeah. percent, you know? Right. Uh, so, you know, yeah, the shoulds. Not, we have the yeah. shoulds that, that cause shame when we direct against ourselves and rage and anger and violence when we direct them against, against others. And it's kind of hard to let go of those. It can be empowering. Yeah, they're they're addictive, uh, very mm-hmm. very addictive. Um, I'm I'm loving this podcast. How are we doing, Heather? We're doing great. This is exactly what I came here for. I was really struggling to come up with some powerful responses, and uh, I'm I'm loving um, your responses and. Kyle's. I can't wait to hear Rhonda's. <laughs> well, the thing that was the most impactful of what you just said, David, is when you're doing the five secrets, you really need to be, it really helps them be successful if you're very other centered. Yeah. And you're not really thinking about what you're going to get out of it, but what is really going on in the other person. And sometimes yeah. that's hard when you're yeah. hurt. Yeah. It, yeah. That That's right. And And a lot of times, Probably most of the time people don't want to. They, we, we want to be judgmental. We want to put up that wall and, and throw rocks from behind the wall and tell other people what a loser father is, which is kind of what, what I've been doing. And, uh, uh, you know, defend yourself against being hurt by, 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 by counterattacking. And that's really the biggest problem in the world and probably is going to cause the extinction of the human race within 50 years or so because there's there's so much rage and violence going around and so much hatred that uh, we and we're not solving problems together we're not working together we're not expressing respect for people who we view as other it's not just limited to sexual uh, issues but religious na- national differences skin colors every everything there's a, a lot of hatred uh, right right now and uh, I, I sound like a corny elderly preacher boring <laughs> well, person but <laughs> oh i well i just want to be more optimistic and say gosh wouldn't it be great if the whole world would learn the five secrets um, yeah. and use it in you know you know, in, in, in peace negotiations and yeah. in other ways of learning to understand each other. I mean, this is right. really powerful because you can't have too much more diabotic, di, di, that's not the, you know, a, opposed positions. Diametrically and opposed. Diametrical, thank you. <laughs> then yeah. someone saying you're a sinner and someone saying, this is who I am. I want to be accepted and loved for who I am. Yeah. Right. Right. Let's, do one more practical thing because this practical practice, I mean, if you want to get good at this, you have to find a partner and practice like this and get your grade, set your ego at the door and then keep repeating. We're not doing role reversals, but that's what you would do until you get a really, a really good response. And what would be in it for you would be if you did want to take this route is probably feeling better about yourself and having a good chance of improving relationships with, with others as well. This isn't something you have to do, 
It's just something that's an, an option for those who are interested. But let me, uh, we have another one here. What uh, if we do? Um, we don't we, want your partner at our house and don't yeah. want to see any affection. That's one. And I you have could, another one? No, that was the, actually, that was the one I was going to say. Let's do that one. That one's chef. I volunteer Rhonda as the. Patient. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you want to be the, the uh, disgruntled was, uh, uh, parent? Yeah, you sure, want to do I'll, Kyle? Yeah, I'll, I'll be the disgruntled Or do okay. Rhonda or Heather, would you want to be the disgruntled parent? Yeah, let's or Heather. No, I, I want to be hey. the, um, the, ki- the, the child. Yeah, yeah, you, you are. You're very childlike. <laughs> In a beautiful way, I might add. <laughs> Thanks. So who do you want to attack you? Um, you know, Heather. Or Kyler. Heather, okay. both, you know, they could, both, they could be like two parents together. Yeah. They could each uh-huh. say one part of it because there's two parts yeah. to that attack. Okay. Okay. I'll start if that's okay, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, Rhonda, we really don't want your partner at our house. And Kyle can finish it. Yeah, not only do we not want them at uh at our house you know if we ever see you you know having any uh, affection with your partner that's just intolerable to us we can't see that we don't want to see it you know any intimacy or closeness or love between you um well it's almost um Gosh, I'm just going to start with my my heart is just racing. I'm I'm feeling kind of flushed, like my I'm going kind of <laughs> shock at hearing the way what you're saying that I'm somebody who is like the one of the most important people in the world to me isn't is going to be hidden from you. And I I love you so much. I would love to be my 100% authentic true person with you. And we're so at different places with that. I'm feeling super sad. I'm just feeling so sad that really important parts of my life are not going to be able to be shared with you. And, you know, I'm imagining that who I am as a person and, and my lifestyle is really repugnant to you. And, um, and I can see that, that that's really true for you. And that that just creates so much really, you know, trauma for me because I love you and I want to be in your life and I want you to be in my life. And I want you to, you know, love the people that I love or even know the people that I love. And, you know, you're telling me you don't want to, to know somebody that's really important to me. You're telling me you don't want to see any affection between me and my my partner and um you know kind of i feel like like my love is being denied and i completely i understand where you're coming from and i will honor your request even though it causes so much pain and I, i'm wondering you know if you could tell me more about what that's like for you to see me and to meet my partner to see us be affectionate um I'd, I'd like to hear more about what that's like for you like what do you see when you see us together? Could you tell me more about it? That was the okay. What the grade end. did you give yourself? <laughs> well, oops, I would give myself. Um, I did exactly the opposite of what I just said. I thought I learned from you. I was really focused on myself. I was not other directed. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna give be a hard grader and say I think that was kind of a C. Because I was so focused on me that I wasn't putting myself in their shoes. Okay, that's good feedback. What did what was your uh, grade, Heather? I would say a B. I agree with you, Rhonda. Going off David's advice to really be other centered in the response, that it could be stronger if it was more other focused. Mm-hmm. I do think you got a lot of um, good things in there. There was the good stroking with letting them know that they were the most important person to you and that it was going to be really hard to hide some hide a person that's very important to you 
from them when they're also important to you. I really like that part. Great feedback, uh, Kyle. Yeah, I, I I agree with what's been said. I'd probably give it a B. I thought you did good thought empathy and you did good, um, you know, I feel statements. I think your feeling empathy for them probably could have been improved was my mm-hmm. biggest kind of critique. But yeah, I will also say that I, that is the same trap that I fell into trying to think to myself how I would respond to this question. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, then then most of our listeners, it was good to make those errors, I thought, uh, Rhonda, because most of our listeners would think, oh, that's that's the way it's supposed to be. And 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 yet it 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 could be vastly stronger by being less strong. And we get so preoccupied with thinking there's there's a right way and that's my way. And uh and kind of promoting this 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 gospel that we should have all this family together in us and and, and and things like that, and really not showing a, a lot of interest and concern in what, what it's like for, for the other person. And as I say, you don't have to do this. A lot of people say, well, why should I have to try to understand them when they don't want to understand me? Yeah, you don't. And the, and the answer to that is you don't have to. Mm-hmm. You can just argue and fight if you prefer. Mm-hmm. Th- th- this this approach is 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 maybe like, to use a Robert Frost expression, the road less traveled by, and it will make a tremendous, tremendous difference uh, if if you can develop the desire and skills to to go down the, this road. That then you've got a good shot at, at developing a more loving, loving relationship. Let's try a role reversal on it. Why why don't you be the uh, the exact parent? You know, I, we don't want your partner here, and we don't want to see any affection. And we can let uh, Kyle or Heather, why don't we let Kyle, do you want to, it's probably your turn again, Kyle. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Hey, listen, Kyle, you know, we really don't want your partner at our house and we don't want to see any affection between the two of you whenever we're together. Oh, gosh. Um, I think it's it's hard to admit this, but I, I really feel angry right away when, when I hear you say that and I, what I've been doing is just kind of acting it out and yelling and arguing more with you, but um, you know, you're my parents and I love you and, and, and it's hard to admit I'm angry with you, but I, I also feel just kind of unwanted and rejected and even kind of lonely. when I hear you don't want my partner at, at the house and you don't want to see any affection. Um, you know, I haven't sort of stopped to think about this, but maybe you're feeling angry too. And maybe you're even, feeling some disgust and being turned off at the thought of of us being affectionate and maybe you're just scared and anxious and maybe it's like I'm even pressuring you to 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 accept me you know and 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 you kind of feel shocked and disrespected you know as well as disappointed but you know I, I I respect you like I'm I'm living at home if you don't want my partner around I mean I'm I feel sad about that i I'm heartbroken about that. Um, you know, we won't be in your house, but I, I'd, I'd hate to lose my relationship with you by continuing to butt heads. Uh, how, did I get any of that right? How are you? How are you feeling? Okay, great. What grade did you give give yourself? Gosh, I would say like a B plus. I didn't like that part at the end about um, kind of following the rules. I felt like I could have navigated that better. Okay, what what did you think, uh, Heather? I would give it a B plus. I still I think it could still be maybe a little bit more other centered, um, but I am still not knowing how to make it other, more other centered. Um, okay, uh, Rhonda. Well, it's very, it's so Kyle. It is that was really moving. I thought I felt very moved. I would give it an A. You know, um, I love how you said it was hard to admit it, but you felt angry. And I, I loved that you talked about you were acting it out by yelling and that you felt your, your, your I feel statements were powerful. You felt unwanted and lonely. And your, your feeling empathy was very articulate and, and specific. You're, maybe you're feeling angry, disgusted, scared, anxious. 
you know, I'm pressuring you to accept me, shocked, disappointed. That was very rich. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought I would give it an A. I thought it was very deep. Thanks, Ronald. Yeah, I, I'd give it an, in that A category also. Uh, if you wanted it to be a bit more other-centered, but you know, tell me, tell me how you have been feeling. Like, I guess you you don't want to see him. You don't want to see any affection. Mm-hmm. And it, it, I'm just wondering if just must feel like he's an invader and then some horrible mm-hmm. aliens are coming into your life and doing these ugly and disgusting sexual forbidden things and uh and 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 i know that this is radically uh different from your upbringing your religious beliefs and 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 can can you tell me more more about that side of it i really want to understand how you're thinking and feeling and experiencing this even though it's uh frightening and shocking and profoundly disturbing to me i I love you and i want to tell me what what's been going on for you this is not uh this would be an add-on to yours not not a replacement for yours which i thought was what what was was beautiful um uh yeah there's room in there right to say like i kind of i i respect your boundaries you know i'm kind of thinking like hey like it's not my, it's not, I don't want this. I kind of hate it. I, I feel rejected. I feel angry, but like, this is your house. I'm living here. Well, I would, but, but then, I mean, then, I, then I would say, but, the, but, the, but, but the, the, the boundary thing to me, the, the important thing is, 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 is the love that we don't have a boundary on our love. Mm-hmm. And, 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 uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll definitely, accept that and maybe the day would come when when you'd change your mind but i'm not going to be pushing pushing for that i'd love to share my whole life with you Mm -hmm. right now i want to express my love for you that even though i'm incredible pain and anger and profound disappointment as you are i want to understand where you're coming from because i love you and i respect you and you're my mom and dad and i'll always love you and i'm hoping we'll always have a a loving relationship even though this is the worst time of our relationship maybe someday we'll look back this was the best time the time that really brought us close we opened up and began to to listen and tell me what it's been been like for you i guess i've been putting you in hell and i've been kind of shouting about it and indignant and acting like a fool and uh but uh, i I, i'm ready to listen now Mm. yeah that was great was it yes why well because you navigated the you know the like you can't be around here. Don't bring them by, you know, really yeah. well. And you kind of like we've been talking about, we're very sort of other focused. We're really honed in on what you were feeling and what they were feeling. And you wanted to continue the conversation about their feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I've resisted my dark humor, uh, <laughs> making outrageous <laughs> uh, role, role plays. Like, is, is it okay if we at least have sex in the bedroom every now and then? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sorry, but I, I can't resist. resist can't resist that. it completely. We would be sad if you resisted it all together. All your listeners. If you yeah. <laughs> yeah. But tell us uh, uh, how, how we're doing and if, if we've gained any. any provided any value for our listeners in this in this podcast because i everyone i told we were going to do this got very very excited and i've been thrilled with the myself but you know i'm this elderly person so i don't hardly count anymore but i thought the dialogue was great and the role plays were were great but uh, what tell us your your take on it Uh, i know also are you going to tell us what you found in your research at all oh me um well, yeah, I can do that. I can do that later. But I think for me, for being part of the podcast has has been great. I think one thing I do want to say is, you know, we we kind of know each other. We have good relationships. You know, yeah. we practice the five secrets. And I would just hate for a listener to kind of who's struggling to think, oh, they're being so flip about, you know, this this topic, and they might be in some real real pain, pain, horrible know? pain, Hor- you know, horrible depression, depression, hopelessness, yeah. yeah. Right? anger all of it and um 
you know, and maybe shame, shame. Yeah, of course. Defectiveness, feeling defective, inadequate, lonely, alone, unwanted, rejected. All of it, you know. And I, you know, we've emphasized this, but to emphasize it again, you know, you, you, <laughs> this by no means is something you've got to do, right? You know, maybe right. it's the threat of violence. You know, maybe you need to get out of a relationship that's really potentially dangerous to you. You know, and you don't have right. to get close to to anyone you don't want to using these techniques you know this would be for the case when it was your agenda to do so you know but i think and even you know, if you're, le- you're leaving you can use these techniques to protect yourself yeah oh yeah to just sort of like kind of disarm them and yeah protect yourself totally you know um but i think we have really like i sort of um provided some really good dialogues and examples of the five secrets for how to respond to some of these comments you know that you yeah. might that you might get i you know i was admittedly anxious going in thinking like gosh how am i gonna do this you know these are hard these are challenging you know and this is uh this has been great i found it easy because i like and trust all of you so much so uh, yeah you know i feel like we can make mistakes and screw up and you know when you feel that caring it just from the person you're interacting with it just transforms everything very true what did you think heather it's because you gave us the idea for this podcast and uh something i deeply appreciated and it, by the way if uh, if someone in in ohio uh, is looking for any kind of psychotherapeutic help or something in this arena of sexual identity uh we can put i'll put your contact information in the show in the show notes uh, we've had a couple requests for referrals in ohio just recently and didn't know who who to who to suggest but can you would you want to say your website or something in case there are people in ohio or looking for for, for some help Sure. My website is www.brightsidemoontherapy.com bright side is is that one word yes and and mood therapy is part of the same word yes bright side mood therapy dot com and then there you'll they'll find the contact information and and, and stuff like that beautiful yeah. thank you yeah um, i loved it david thank you for doing the podcast it was a good reminder to me to be um, more other focus when I'm using the five secrets and um, that I have a lot more practicing to do. And I really like Kyle's reminder of you don't have to continue the relationship. And David, your reminder that if you're having a lot of negative emotions that you might still have some personal work to do. Yeah. Cool. And how about you, Rhonda? What are your closing words on this potentially important podcast i would think important to a lot of people who are hurting yeah these are you know when i sometimes when i'm feeling attacked or really hurt or angry i can't do a five secrets excuse me immediately i i write it out or i think about it i think about it for a few days i think about a couple of options and then i put something together and you know i have to say kyle you know you're I've been gone for like five weeks from the therapy world and I've almost forgotten some feeling words <laughs> and um, getting back in the groove has a little been really challenging. You're, you know, the, the depth of your emotion in dealing with your, in your role plays was re- very meaningful. And, um, and I think that, you know, when you can really be other focused in the five secrets, when you're, when you're getting, to the place where you feel comfortable and you're choosing to work on the relationship. That's really where the power comes from. That's really where the, the emotion comes from when the person that's listening to you do the five secrets really feels heard and seen and understood. That's where the connection comes from. And that's where the closeness can get developed as much as possible, even in these really challenging situations. Um, Thank you, Rhonda. That's, I'm very touched to hear you say that. And I just appreciate your genuineness as we've been doing this. It's, you know, I can, everyone else will just be listening, but I can see your face on the screen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Heather. Wow. And, you know, for bringing this up to us. And I kind of want to say that if other listeners have good topics that they want to have David talk about, 
respond to, you know, you might find yourself on a podcast too. One other thing I want to throw in there, this practice is crucial. And uh, a, 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 a woman, Ana Silva from Portugal, is a lay uh, person, although she's getting into coaching. Her, her life work is a veterinarian in the Portuguese military, but she's really brilliant and, and warm. And she's formed a free five secrets practice group for people from anywhere in the world. If you'd like to join, and I, I think they get together once a week and practice these techniques. And therapists could benefit from it, and general public could benefit from it. And I can tell you her email, if you write it down, I'll put it in the show notes too, but everyone doesn't read the, the show notes. But um, I, I think this would be could be a life-changing experience for you if you'd like to learn the five secrets of effective communication and any kind of conflict uh, situation it doesn't have to be a sexual issue. It could be anything, but it's her email is a t e r e a silva six. That's all one word. Atera silva six. A t e r e s a s I L V A six. And I'll have that also in the in the show notes in case you'd like to contact her. And we'll also, there's also, if any of you are interested, a uh a free uh team therapy practice group that meets on Saturday mornings at uh eight uh, thirty New York time, and that's for people from around the world. That's a fantastic group also. And uh Lexus Doubting is the contact person there. Let me know if you're interested, and then I'll put her email also in the uh, in, in the show in the show notes. Because I think getting together with uh, like-minded people to practice these skills can be a life-changing experience, and they're free. And you know, they say the best things in life are free, and I I've, I really believe that most of the time, to be honest. Uh, anything okay. else in closing from anyone? Well, thank you, Heather. It's great to 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 meet you and to find out you're as gracious and awesome in person as I thought you would be, judging from your email. Kyle, it's always fantastic to hang out with you. You're one of my favorite people in the world. Thank uh, you, David. And uh, fan fantastic. I'm uh, yeah, a fantastic, uh, brilliant young therapist to get his doctorate soon. He's been working with us on the app, and soon he'll be practicing at the Feeling Good Institute in Mountain View yep. and doing his uber fantastic, mind boggling, slightly above average clinical work. <laughs> <laughs> For a slightly less than average fee. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That, that's right. Get them when the price is right. Uh, and uh, Rhonda, always so great to see you. Welcome home from your British and European tour where you were uh, greeted like a, uh, a, a celebrity and more. I think in the Brit British uh, team CBT group viewed you like the queen and curtsied <laughs> when they met you. And we'll, we'll get into that in another podcast, the fantastic stuff that you're doing all over the world. You've spent a long time in India teaching team, and now you've been working with the British group and, and many others. And, uh, and, and gee, you're just a, a you're the sound of fresh air and oh mountain God. streams. And or, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the sound, the smell when you leave the when you enter somebody else's bathroom experience. But they, <laughs> or, or the, you're the smell of an outhouse uh, on, yeah. on, a, on a beautiful mountain, in Colorado. <laughs> and of course, David, we're always super grateful to you. Thank you for even for designing the five secrets, for creating it, and giving this gift to the world. Yeah, you're very, you're very welcome. And so have a have a great week, everyone. And uh, bye, uh, bye, thank bye. You. bye. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. 
You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.